Yeah. Okay, so all of you should have gotten a card with the website address on it. So if you want to print any of these out after today, you're more than welcome to print them out. But I am actually going to go through, first of all, some of the supplies I really think that you need if you're going to take this seriously. Because I found out that the more authentic the game is, the more it appeals to the students. So I was actually giving students something like this. And at first, that was a little bit smaller because I thought that, you know, I would save some paper, things like that. And they said, well, it wasn't big enough to feel like a playing card. You have to make it bigger. And then some of them said, well, it doesn't feel like actual playing cards. So the things I bought now are some point playing cards. So they actually feel like, you know, they feel like playing cards that students can actually use. So the more authentic the game feels, the more appealing it is to the students. So that's one thing that I've learned from all of my experience. So you can see my office shelves really don't have any books on them. So I've, <laughs> I've actually stolen about three bookshelves now, and they're on the other side of the room. But I don't use my shelves for books. Uh, this is actually a graphic calculator still in the box. I you know, that is a bamboo tablet. These three baskets are some baskets of snacks. <laughs> so students have actually been bringing me snacks to put in the baskets now because they know that they're up there. But these are some of the plastic boxes that you've probably seen me carrying some of these pieces around in. So you have to invest in some boxes to put all the stuff in. Otherwise, you're not going to go very far with this. These actually are some personalized whiteboards that I use to take into the classroom. Students can write answers on them and hold them up. Notepads. I have some notepads that I use because what I've been told by students is that when I'm figuring out the problem during a game on a piece of paper, that doesn't feel like I'm playing a game because I'm not using a notepad like what I would use in an actual game. So I actually say, okay, fine, I'll buy you some notepads. So I have notepads. So if they want to do scratch work while we're playing games, they use the notepads. And actually, they really love them for some reason. Uh, when they come into office hours, they'll show me their work on a notepad and tear it off and say, is this the right answer? <laughs> so apparently, they love the notepads. This next little pile of stuff is actually some of the door prizes I'm collecting for the conference that's coming up in, in January. So there will be prizes if you, know, you come in January. So if you want to take extra of these, take extra of these. I have Newton balls, of course, that's pretty enjoyable. Some other math games. And then you see I have some bingo chips. I have bingo chips in like 12 different colors. And you know, I don't use them just for playing the games. I found a lot of interesting uses for them, such as when I do the capture, recapture problems. I'll have them take uh, some out of one color, put it another color in, and then they do the recapture. And then they said, oh, well, I finally understand why we're going to use some of these ratio and proportions uh, applied rather than just those fake fishing problems that they get in the, the textbook. They were actually counting the different colors and they felt like they learned a lot. These are the playing cards that I have and the dice. I actually have a ton of different dice, but the biggest hit so far has been the blank ones that I can write whatever I want on. So I can write things like x squared. I can write things like x plus 2 on them. And then they roll the dice and you know, things happen. <laughs> <laughs> There's my box of chalk. I'm still living in a college where we still have to use chalk. So um, 
But you see, like, the fan is pointing right at my dust. So that's the most important thing on the entire shelf. Because usually it's about 85 degrees in my office. So oh, you can see, though, that I have a variety of supplies that I've accumulated. So I just sort of put together a couple of reminders that, yeah, so at the end of the day, you can't go and print all of these off yourself. You can see that this is very labor intensive to cut all of these. But there were actually 70 copies of every game in this box, and I had some student volunteers cut them out. So that's how I got so many of them. This is just another reminder to come to the January workshop. And, and you can see some of the supplies that I talked about. And I don't buy anything at full price, so don't be fooled by that. Everything I buy is at a discount. But even these boxes here, they were 10 cents a piece. You know, I went to the ACO, they had a coupon, I had a sale going on, so 10 cents a box. I don't know how I end up with these deals, but I should like this school actually had to get rid of their notepads because they had a copyright issue over their logo. I snatched up all of the notepads for free. So if you know the right people, you can get supplies at a, you know, a really good rate. You do need paper clips, you need the binder clips, you need to have glue, you need scissors, and when I say scissors, I mean, imagine though, you need a comfortable pair. Something that you can cut for hours and hours at a time with. <laughs> and I do have my own paper cutter that I keep at home because I don't want to be chopping it at, at the office until 2 a.m. So some days I just go home and I cut all of these off. But it's, it's actually a very good investment. I think I got it. 250 on the clearance rack at Staples. So, hey, that's not normally something that you would see, but the company was coming out with a new model. I saw that was on the clearance rack 250. So you have to know, you know your prices. Uh, bags to put things in. You wouldn't think that's a big issue, but you have to have bags to put the different pieces in. Otherwise, you will have things floating around all over all over the place and actually if i'm playing multiple games with my students on the same day i might put all of the game pieces for those two games in a bag and hand each group the bag with the game pieces for the day and that we're already going to use and that's one trick i found to save a little bit of time again the bingo chips i really think that they're fantastic for all types of different games and activities, but the dice. You might want small dice, large dice. I have some that have fractions on them. I have some that are small, polyhedra. So you can only imagine what types of games that you can have with that. But if you really don't want to pay the money for the blank dice, a cheap alternative is to buy some wooden blocks. And they work just as well, but at a cheaper price. So wooden blocks, 100 of them, 50 cents at Michael's with a coupon. So <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. Playing cards, there's a lot of games you can make with playing cards. I wouldn't buy those for my students, so I was at a Arts, Beats, and Eats this summer. I took a whole stack from the casino. You know, they were getting rid of them. I took a stack. <laughs> I mean, they, they have a hole in the middle, so I, uh, theoretically I could have students measure the size of the hole and tell me the radius, right? right. I, I could do all types of stuff. It's not just for the playing cards. The playing cards, yes, the, the blank ones have started to work out for me also. 